Hello once again everyone. I warmly welcome you to the series of the object oriented concepts developed in different languages. Today we talk about small talk. Well, small talk is the first object oriented language. Also, small talk is a pure object oriented programming language. Meaning that, unlike Java and C, there is no difference between values which are objects and values which are primitive types. In small talk, primitive variables such as integer, booleans, and characters are also objects. In the sense that they are instances of corresponding classes and operations on them are invoked by sending messages. A programmer can change the classes and implement primitive values so that new behavior can be defined for their instances. For example, to implement a new control structure or even so that the existing behavior will be changed. This is summarized in commonly heard phrase in small talk, everything is an object, which would more accurately be expressed as all values are objects as variable aren't. Since all values are objects, classes themselves are also objects. Each class is an instance of the meta class of that class. Meta classes in turn are also objects and are all instances of a class called meta class. There are few small talk versions available. The most commonly available version is small talk 80. Before proceeding with this video, I strongly encourage you to watch our previous videos on object oriented concepts in C sharp, Java and C++. In this video, we will be only considering about implementation of object oriented concepts in small talk rather than just explaining object oriented concepts. So if you don't have any knowledge about object oriented concepts, I would strongly recommend you to read some tutorials or watch our previous videos and get a good knowledge of object oriented concepts first. In this video, I will be discussing these mentioned object oriented concepts in small talk. First, let's move on to classes. As I mentioned before, every class is a subclass of a superclass. This is the class definition in small talk. First, we write the name of the superclass, the keyword subclass and the name of our class. Within a class you can define many instance variables. Also you can define class variables, pool dictionaries and also a category. Now let's move on to an example. Object is my meta class name. Subclass is person. So here I have created a person subclass from the object class. I have two instance variables which is first name and last name. My category is on small talk. First I want you to notice that this is a simple method called on the object class which itself is an object. This creates two classes in the running time image. One called person and another one called person class. The class person is the sole instance of the class person class. Person class is an instance of the meta class. In this case it's the object. So in small talk for every class you create an invisible parallel hierarchy of meta classes is created. These meta classes are referred to as the class side by small talkers and by the small talk code browser. The reason I mention all this is because these meta classes commonly show up in other languages 
such as the factory pattern, a pattern all object construction. This is important because it's a great way of conceptualizing the meta class. It's the factory of creating instance of the class. Next, let's move on to messages, also known as methods. Here are some examples of using methods. Let's focus on the first one. The message is the most fundamental language construct in small talk. Even control structures are implemented as message sends. Small talk adapts by default a synchronous single dynamic message dispatch strategy. Interleaving of keywords and arguments is meant to improve readability of the code since arguments are explained by their preceding keywords. For example, an expression to create a rectangle using C++, Java, syntax must be written as new, rectangle, and you pass two arguments. It's undeclared which argument is which. But by construct, in small talk, this code would be written as below. Rectangle, width 100, height 200. The receiver in this case is rectangle class and the answer will be a new instance of the class with a specified width and height. In small trope, all the methods are supposed to be public. Method or messages are invoked as laid bound. Objects obviously communicate by message passing in small talk. Now let's move on to objects. As I mentioned before, in small talk, everything is objects. Even 5 plus 2 is a collection of objects. 5 is object, plus is object, 2 is object. Now let's see how to create instance of our person class. Notice that the new is a method on the person class rather than a keyword in the language. It's simply an ordinary method that happens to be named new. Unlike other languages, constructors in small talk are nothing special. They are simply any method that happens to create and return an instance of a class. Let's move on. Now we could do this. In this creation of the instance we can pass our parameters also. But a constructor would really help pretty this up and encapsulate the knowledge about what fields are required for the construction rather than forcing the client to individually initialize the object and hoping he does it correctly. So let's write a constructor for our person class. We will put it on the person class or the person's class site as it would be normally called. Notice this is simply an ordinary method named first name and last name on the person's meta class. It's pretty much the same pattern as before but calls self new, the default constructor inherited from its superclass. I can say self because this method is in the person class. It can be used like below. Now you can see it's much nicer now. A client no longer needs to know what argument to initialize. He can simply call a constructor, more importantly a named constructor, not an anonymous one like you would see in most other languages. Now let's move on to inheritance. 